and congratulations on the film. Uh, a real feel good film, just like the previous one. And boy, do we need something like that at the moment. There's a lot of people returning in this, this sequel, uh, including yourselves, and you're directing as well as writing this time. Having had the experience now of doing both, because it's your directing debut, um, do you think you'd do it again? <laughs> yes, 100%. I think it was something that we yeah. both naturally felt you know it was it was the logical next step because obviously we've 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 now written um quite a few movies together and produced them as well with james spring and just in terms of the process you know how we've been um collaborating with previous directors on the floor and in post and the edit and also just as writers who are starting with a blank page and creating a world it just felt that if we had the support of the producer, the finance and the distributor. And the cast. And the cast. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was something that we would absolutely want to yeah. do. So we were really grateful for the opportunity and we, um, yeah. we really enjoyed it. So how easy or otherwise was it to get most of the cast back together? Um, getting the band back together. Yeah, everybody was up for it. Um, I mean, we made a conscious decision that we wanted the sequel to center around the fisherman's story this time. Um, having got them to the place where they achieved the top 10 hit in number one, it was about the, the fallout of fame um, uh, on the community. Um, you know, that was what we wanted to explore consciously in number two. So, yeah. Um, and we centered that around uh, our lead fisherman, James Purefoy, um, and his experience of that and, and his interaction as he falls apart with everyone around him and the impact on the community. So, because the first, yeah. I mean, the first film is definitely a, you know, it's, it's ultimately the manager's story. Yeah. You know, it's about Danny Anderson trying to kind of, you know, resurrect his career and get them a top 10 album. I mean, our tagline was some bands can't be managed for number one. And this, um, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and this one was, yeah. you know, in terms of the, you know, what did that sequel look like? You know, like any, you know, any filmmaker, is there a sequel? There may be the desire and the appetite mm. from the audience. Yeah. Uh, even the actors, but does it actually, does hold it make up. sense? Yeah. Does it hold up? And I think the beauty of this is that um, in number one, um, we had, um, we actually had to cut off um, the film and we made a conscious decision to um, finish the story at the end of the top 10, you know, getting the top 10 album. So what came after yeah. was things that we actually really wanted to, show in number one but there it, wasn't space, there wasn't space yeah. and time so we always knew that we had this amazing number two which was as a compelling and as a unique pitch as number one which was tango ordinary singing fishermen i've got a top 10 album they're struggling with fame and how to balance that with their normal ordinary working day lives they fall apart they build back up and they end up playing the main stage, the pyramid stage at Glastonbury, supporting Beyonce. I mean, and that just yeah. felt like, okay, there's another movie. I mean, yeah. we said number one was Jerry Maguire, and number <laughs> two is quite his final tap, you know. <laughs> progression. So yeah. So how well so. do you know the, the actual fishermen's friends themselves? Because you must have got, got to know them pretty well during the first film. We met them in uh 2010, just as they had the just as they were about to achieve their top 10 hit. Is that right? They were on the promotional tour for that. Yes. Yeah. And then we went to... I'm trying we, to remember. We actually went to Glastonbury with them in 2011, which is why we were very passionate about telling oh, the wow. second part of the story. That so must we, have been quite an experience. They were more rock and roll than any rock and roll band we've ever <laughs> hung out with before. Yeah. And, <laughs> so that, and that's it all... It takes some training. Yeah. And that, that is kind yeah. of part of the fun with yeah. number two, which is, you know, let's face it, we all kind of... When we think about rock and roll stars, we think of... Led Zeppelin, Hammer of the Gods. We think of, you know, all these iconic yeah. stories. And, yeah. and then kind of recently, everybody's into kind of Bikram yoga and chamomile tea, which is wonderful. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't... The fishermen aren't into the, either of those yeah, but, things. But no. the anecdotes, the anec <laughs> you know, the, the hell-raising anecdotes are, are in yeah. short supply on a mint tea. Yeah. So I think these guys, are, they, they always said they're a, drink they're, they're a drinking band with a singing problem. And yeah. we always love that, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's, you know, that's a good way of putting it actually were, the, were they at the premiere at Newquay I mean they, they must have been I, I just wondered how they reacted to the film I mean because the film is essentially about community we wanted to screen the film for the first time celebrating the community that helped us make the film and you know which it's inspired by so we took it back to Newquay to the wonderful cinema there the lighthouse um uh, who are big supporters of us. Pri and, and, um, and what's great about that is it's a, it's a privately owned kind of um, string and chain of cinemas. So yeah. local owners, yeah. um, Mr. Williams and his son. And we, and, you yeah. know, they opened it up. We got, you know, it's a beautiful cinema. It's really great. So we had two screens packed with, um, you know, the local community, the fishermen, the flags, their families, their friends, everyone. I mean, we decided to introduce everybody in the audience who'd taken part in, in the making of the film. I think there were 45 of us on stage. So <laughs> it was a it was a pile on and it was great. And that's why we were there to celebrate, you know, the collaboration from, you know, over the last 12 years with the fishermen, but with everyone else from the local community, Port Isaac, wider Cornish community who've helped us, um, you know, make these movies. So and that's it, was, it was a great occasion, a real celebration. Yeah, and it does yeah. take many people to make a film. Yeah. And, and I think a, that, yeah. you know, it yeah. galls us actually when people just kind of stand on their own kind of claiming all the glory. Yeah. It's kind of, we are, I think because we've been in the trenches and worked our way up, we just have, I, I suppose we have a humility and a kind of gratitude towards, you know, yeah. how these things come together. Yeah. And um, we should probably just explain the flags, Meg said the flags. The so fishermen's the wives and girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. Work that out. <laughs> 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 but for you um, as first time directors how did it feel for you because it was kind of special it was um, special yeah. because we had our fam we had our families there and i think we we're also just you know nervous that everyone in the audience felt we'd done justice to the story it's you know it's inspired by a true story there's a responsibility with that um and so there was a lot of laughter a lot of tears and a lot of singing. So uh, I think we got, we got, we got, we felt reassured. Yeah. Uh, you know, those people were really pleased, um, which was, you know, a relief above all else. It was. No, it, it, it was the perfect, it, so, yeah. it was the perfect place to kind of, you know, let the film set sail. You know, yeah. it was kind of on we go. And I think, you know, so, the number one, one of the main things about it was it felt accessible to a wide audience nationwide because it's a film set in Cornwall, but it's a film about community and it travels, you know, further than the Cornish, further than the Tamar because people recognise that sense of community throughout the country and, and you know, and internationally. So hopefully we, we will connect in the same way again this time. Um, and we developed this film during COVID during lockdown and um, we went a little deeper with some of the storylines, um, you know, touching on isolation and grief um, through James's character, our very capable, heroic lead fisherman. And, um, you know, I think hopefully people will connect with his experience as well um, and maybe have shared similar, you know, some of those emotions. Yeah, because that, that yeah. in terms of the grief, that's, you know, obviously yeah. um, Jago, um, passed away in the first yeah. film, played by David Heyman. Yeah. And that was something we definitely wanted to um, deal with in number two. We wanted to see how loss can really, you know, by a kind of a, you know, a captain of, of the ship, which is what he was, the loss of that, also the captain of the band, and obviously, you know, yeah, destabilizing for everything. You know, a patriarch of the community, you know, how do, how do you cope? And the baton has been passed on to Jim. You know, and I think it's confronting when that happens, you know, to, to, to any of us, you know, yeah, so um, that humanizes the whole story and that provides most of the kind of the drama and the pathos. And yeah, so yeah. should we be looking forward to uh, an episode three? I mean, if, is the magic if it worked, if it, <laughs> it if, it, if it worked, there's definitely an appetite from us and from, yeah. The members team, of yeah. the cast and the team and that you know there is there is definitely there is a great story for number three that's already been talked about but it's yeah. it's always do the audience want it yeah. yeah 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 i think there's a very good chance fingers crossed anyway I thank you very so. much indeed Plenty of shanties left in the can so uh, yeah <laughs>